Hi guys, I'm Mike. And I'm Ash. And this is F1 Fanatics. <laughs> So guys, we are back for the final part of our second mini-series of the summer, which is F1 mid-season ratings, which only means that there are four teams left to go. So in today, we are looking at Alfa Romeo, Racing Point, Haas and Williams. And uh, as you notice, we are in the same gear. This is a pre-record and our channel is a little bit like, uh, this is a bit of a throwback to Mauricio Top. We're like a Mauritius, we're just starting off out here in the YouTube F1 world. And so guys, if you want to kind of view all these kind of ratings and all F1 related contacts, you know there's only technical issues again. <laughs> Used well, to one. Exactly, that, there's only one place to get that sort of technical issue. But if you want F1 related more content like this, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click that bell notification because it'll let you know when all our stuff's coming out. Exactly. But should we get into the video today, Ash? Yeah, we will. And the only place to start today is with Alfa Romeo. So well, it's probably not the only place. Well, it is for this one. Okay, it's the only place we could have started. Because mm. if you have uh, checked out our driver ratings, uh, sorry, not driver, rate, predicted lineups for next year, follows well, the same order. So, yeah, only you know. place. Well, I'm the one that's left to make these things, so I've got. <laughs> Simplicity at its finest. We need to keep things simple. So we get confused. I get confused. I was trying to save you there. He gets confused. Mike, your rating. Seven. Standard. Alfa Romeo done just about good enough as what they'd expected. No worse, no better, I would say. Kimi's been very good. Giovinazzi's been rookie-ish. Some good performances. Some left to be designed. Seven. And I agree. It is one of those consistently in and around the points. No overly bad results. No standout results. It's... It is what it is. It's one of those. <laughs> no. Plain sailing through the middle. Yeah. So, us man. Iceman, Kimi Reichen. Your rating for him? Eight. I think Kimi has been, he, he just loves racing. He's in a really good place at Alpha. He seems really happy. Um, he's just Andrew putting Kimi in. Fan. Huh? Andrew <laughs> Kimi fan. I don't need to know that actually. I, I think he deserves an eight. I mean, if you disagree, obviously get involved in the comments below and let me know. But I think he's been very solid, above average performances. He has just kind of consistently put in the points. There was probably a little bit of a middle patch um, that he wasn't necessarily too great in. But Kimi Raikkonen, that's what it says on the tin. He's a superb driver and he's always going to do well in whatever car he's in. So if he's in a midfield car, he's going to be at the top end of that midfield. And I agree. More, more agreeing in this video than we had in the last and we only down to <laughs> but it is one of those He's, he has always been near the top end of where you would expect the car to be there's never been a race where he's majorly dropped off from that he's hit expectations and it is one of those another driver that is out driving the car really um, his performance is Definitely been a stand up this season, so really good work from him. And let's move on to his rookie teammate, Antonio Giovinazzi. So, your rating for him? He's a five. Um, Gio. <sighs> Shows promise. There's some natural pace there, and he has actually beaten Kimi in qualifying and once in a race. I believe it is 11 to 1, actually, there kind of thing. But in qualifying, he showed some natural pace. But again, maybe uh, your criticism of Lando Norris was he hasn't been able to put consistent laps. I think Gio is more with that. He's going to need a good second half of the season. Both of us had him dropped. So I just don't think, I think you need to do more than what he's doing to 
retain your seat in F1. So, but I reckon if he's got an environment to learn in, there's probably not a better driver on the grid to have as your mentor than Kimi Raikkonen. No. I think he's probably the one that would be most open to helping out. When you think of the experience within teams, mm. Hamilton Vettel overly competitive, so probably... No, Kimi would be happy oh, to yeah, see no. the next generation come through. Yeah. So he might as well tap into that mentor, and I think he has spoken about how good a mentor Kimi has actually been to him. And I have given him a six. I just think, let's be honest now, Antonio Giovinazzi is being used as a placeholder. He's not... The who? Well, it's quite obvious that Ferrari are wanting to get Mick Schumacher into Formula One. Surely not, why? As soon as got possible. Got famous dad or something. I don't know, that seems to be the order of the day really in Formula One for some drivers, do not it? So, but it's, there's no secret uh, Ferrari's ambitions of getting Mick Schumacher into Formula One and in all honesty they were probably expecting him to have done better in F2 this season which would have nicely led to him having enough points on his super licence to have a seat next year which doesn't seem to be the case but Antonio Giovinazzi has done okay for a rookie season I just think it is one of those where if you're going to compare him to his teammate, you're never going to be able to... So compare him to his other rookies? Compared to the other rookies, he's still not... Bottom of the park. I, I would say he's probably been the worst performing rookie this season. Um, and that would be the reason why it's so low. But he has had times where he has shone in races and... There's talent there. Yeah, and that. when you can look at some of the more experienced drivers on the grid, he's had a much better season than they have. So, I think a six is fair, but he's in and around that area, not any higher, not really any lower. So, unfortunately for him, I don't see him being an, a long-term Formula One driver. We can only see what the future holds. And let's move on to the worst name in Formula 1. Sport Pezza Racing Point. Yeah. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, that's the team name. There's, we'll, no, we'll stick, there's no Force India anymore. No, we'll stick with just Racing Point. No, still probably the worst name in Formula 1. Yeah, not but. sure on the Sport Pezza sponsorship. There has been some dodgy stuff coming out about that. They removed all their African uh, sponsorship in Kenya and now I think it's just across the board. Technical difficulties, you love them. Um, so, yeah, yeah not sure how long it'll be Sport Pezza. It's, an, it's another one like Rich Energy. Lawrence is stacked with money, so. Yeah, so. They'll be fine. You've given them. Seven. I think they were always going to struggle this season because obviously, with the financial woes when they were in, forcing Deer trying to. And uh, like, did he get arrested in the end? He, he certainly. He was charged. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the previous team owner, God, what's his name? VJ Malia. VJ Malia, there you go. I know the team yeah, See, that? see, when numbers aren't involved, I'm on it. <laughs> Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> um, so they're always going to struggle because obviously that affected their investment in um, their car design for this far. And then Lawrence Stroll came in late, uh, bringing in Lance Stroll with him. And... Yeah, I, I think they've done solid. Those improvements in Hungary, the car looks like it's going in the right direction. I wouldn't be surprised to see Force India be more competitive in the points regularly in the second half of the season. But they've done okay. And I've given them a six because, yes, there's been improvements, but there's been improvements in the hands of one driver. We can all figure out who that is, and our ratings are going to show it. On the whole, the car's just not been good enough. Team performance hasn't been great. And there's a lot of faith being put in one son. Yeah. You know who you are. Oh, that's, that's a call out. But we'll start, we'll start with Sergio. You've given him? Solid. And this is a weird one. I, I, I could actually probably see that... I see him staying at Racing Point, but I think it might actually be a 
better move for him to move on somewhere because I think he's just in the comfort zone and even his performances have started to slip because what well, he hasn't necessarily got a teammate that's pushing him and he's just very comfortable there. He knows he can underperform and he won't really be punished for it. Um, so he hasn't scored a points finish, I think, since Azerbaijan, which potentially says he could be a bit lower, but I'm just going to go with Perez. He's just fairly consistent and he gets the car round usually. Hockenheim wasn't a great moment for him. No. Um, not one of his best seasons. Maybe he could have gone for a six, but I pushed him on the seven because I think he's just an experienced driver. Does what he does. And... I've given him a six for the exact reason you're saying. He's another driver like Hulkenberg. You think of him as a consistent point scorer, and this season it hasn't been the case. Yes, that's to do with the car, but he was consistently scoring points in the Force India when you wouldn't expect it to. And even the second half of last season when, in all honesty, that car wasn't the greatest was still in and around the points there and just hasn't lived up to what is expected. Gets a six though for the simple reason his performances have picked up and I would say he is definitely the better driver in that pairing despite what the points may say. We should probably move on. Yeah. But strong. Hmm. Yeah. Your rating. Right. So first instincts, you might go, what? But he's leading in points. He got that fourth place drive in Hockenheim. How can you give him a two on that performance? I'm going to get something off my chest about Lance Strong. All right. So strap yourselves in. Let's get ready to go. I need a chair. <laughs> yeah. Right. Lance Strong. Nothing against the guy personally. I actually think he's one of the likeable drivers on the grid. Right. He's young. He, he could very well prove me wrong and in the future, but here we're going to go. I look at, would he be in that Force India seat without his dad buying the team? No. When he's got that Force India seat, he then has to be considering to be better outperforming what Ocon did. And I'm not necessarily saying in terms of point finishes, because I think the Force India car was better than what the Racing Point car is this season. But in terms of Sergio Perez, like we said, is comfortable. And I think if you were a rookie driver, Sergio Perez is one of the drivers I would have liked to have been as a rookie because, well, he's not even a rookie actually more. That makes it worse. He's three seasons up. So three seasons into F1, I definitely would see Sergio Perez as being a driver who I'd be like, I can beat this guy. His qualifying has been woeful. He has lost 12-0 to Sergio Perez in qualifying. And I believe in the race, if you, they both got a DNF each, I think. And I think it's 7-3. Um, yeah, the DNFs kind of, you count them out in that performance for finishing ahead. So I think if you count the DNFs, it's 8-4 to four, uh, from there. But so, yeah, he, he's not beating. And obviously the Hockenheim race... I don't know. I thought it was a team strategy. I've been chatting with some people on Twitter. They actually said that it was his call to make. And if that is, then I go, kudos. That was a fantastic call and a fantastic drive in Hockenheim. He is a driver who seems to excel when there is chaos and manages to stick in there and then gets a high point finish on that. But how many races a season do we go, it's absolute carnage, and just someone goes there. It's not enough to go on points. So he's not beating what Ockham would have done in the seat. He hasn't earned the seat by right on merit there. Um, yes, he did well in a Hockenheim performance, but that qualifying performance has been so woeful and so bad that it's terrible. And I look at then the people around his age, Max Verstappen, 21, Leclerc, um, 21, he's 20, Lando Norris is 19, and I think George Russell is 20, 21, uh, uh, 21 as well. So I go, if I compare Lance Stroll to them, 
he's nowhere near. And these are meant to be the 20 best seats in Formula One. Well, in yeah, single seats. 20 seats, seats. The 20 <laughs> seats in single seater racing. And I don't think he warrants a place in one of them. Well, I gave him a four. You can, you can stand back up now, Ed. I'm going to sit down. I will be a little bit nicer to him. <laughs> but, and there's always a but, and things that come after but always seem to be. They're never good things. Let's be honest. Would he have a seat at Racing Point if his dad hadn't bought the team? Doubt it. In the Williams against Sergei Sorokin, they were pretty even. Did alright. He scored six points, Sergei Sorokin got one, and I think Sergei Sorokin's performance is very underrated. He yeah. So, well. in all honesty, was it that he had the merit to get the seat? Probably not. Did he take the opportunity when he got given it? Let's have a look at his performances this season. No. So, really, let's be honest, he was one of the first drivers to lose qualifying battle with his teammate. The only other person so far to have lost their team battle is Robert Kubica. So, there's that one. On a Saturday, not performing. On a Sunday, you can be blatantly honest and say the only Sunday he's ever performed was Hockenheim. Other than that, hasn't performed. But, I'm going to put one more thing out there. Hockenheim great result because of strategy, which he only got because he was slower than the two Williams drivers. Yeah. So, yes, well done, you got a fourth place, but the reason you got the fourth place is because you were worse than a team that is doing awfully this season, because had he not been at the back of the race in that scenario, probably would have he have taken the risk to go onto the slicks? No, because at that stage, no one else did. So even if it was his call, I think it's one of those where... Nothing to lose. It was a call like Mercedes at, um, at Hungary. There was nothing to lose by making the decision, but plenty to gain. So in all honesty, yeah, not a great season, but he got a fourth place, so I'll give him a few extra points for that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we've been really kind to Lance Stroll there. Um, like nothing you said, against him, though. Nothing because against the bike, because I do As you said, he is, he nice is one of the nicer guys on the grid. There are just like, like, oh, quick, cover this up. We do. No, this, it, this is bad. He is. He yeah. is one of the nicer guys on the grid. And But we talk in an F1 perspective. When you look at F1. performances, exactly, it's his performances as a driver we're rating, not what we think of him as a person, because... When he got his chance at Williams, I think he deserved it. It was, yeah. it was a good opportunity. He did okay. I just I, don't think. I think now he struggles with making that jump from F3 straight into F1 and missing that F2. And you talking about Mick Schumacher, who did very well in the F3 the previous year and has struggled in the F2. He's missed out on what those other drivers have had, which is experience, experience at the top, but like honing his skills. But you're saying that this is his third season in F1. When you look at some of the other drivers in terms of their third season, Hamilton had already won a championship. Max looks like he's going to win a championship. Vettel in his third season was... Might have moved to Red Bull. I can't he had made his move to Red Bull by then and was one of those that and you were looking we at. We would have already had a race win. He got a race win in Toro yeah. Rosso, but yeah. So... Three seasons in F1 for someone who everyone talks about as potential has never lived up to it. No. So it, it is one of those where, let's be honest, it's not been a great season for you. Right, so now, now that we've got our lance bashing out of the way, uh, deep breaths. Let's do our hash bashing. Oh yeah, <laughs> hash bashing. Here we go. Oh. oh, this is the video we've been waiting for. It's an angry video. <laughs> right, we've calmed down. Promise. Uh, four. Terrible. Their car is worse than it what it started with at the start of the season. Made massive strides, probably like we've discussed before, uh, ending last season with the best of the rest car and they just can't get it wrong and I know a lot of teams have struggled with these new tyres but it's the same for everyone. Mm. So, so, the same. 
Everyone's got the same challenge. Yeah. Yeah. And to kind of heat well, up, so... Well, I've given them a four as well. Uh, let's be honest with this one. Roman Grosjean's only finished half the races. Yeah, that's not good. So straight away, in that aspect, you're thinking... I give him a ten. Kevin Magnussen, how many races has he finished? He's, he's had a few and retirements as well. Probably ten... Uh, we should probably know this at the top yeah. end, but... I think he's had ten, two, I think only a couple of DNFs. Two, maybe three retirements. So that's nine retirements in 12 races. And admittedly, Four. you've got the British Grand Prix where both of them retired. But still, nine retirements from 12 races is not a great return from a team. We say it consistently. If you want to be challenging in F1, you need to be finishing races. Yes, and when you are struggling on. and need race data... You definitely need to be saying, yeah. especially in a small team, to try and figure out what is going wrong. Your drivers fighting on track is not a good idea as well. So, and also the fact that so far their best performances has come, uh, best performances come in Australia, yeah. first race of the season, fastest car that they've designed, still Australia spec. But they do get a four because Gunther Steiner has to be one of the favourite team principals out there. He he's he's brilliant. I like him. So, so, yeah, no, not a great performance from Hans. Right, let's come on, carry on with the bashing. k Mag, maybe not so much bashing. No, he's, he's, bashing. he's actually alright, k Mag's likeable, like you said, that like four. <laughs> um, in team fighting, I don't know, it's been great. I started off the season well, so that's why he's got a four. Uh, clearly, he. When I was getting to these ratings, I was getting angry, and so I was all very nice and happy. Nines, eights for everyone, and now I'm like, fours, twos, everyone's rubbish. Um, yeah, solid, not great, sums up what the team is, didn't think they could go higher. I gave him six, mainly because... He likes K-Mag. Well, I do like K-Mag, but as we said... You need to finish race to get points. He's finished more races than Grosjean. Um, outdriven the car sometimes. Main issue though, inter-team battle. Number one rule in Formula One, do not hit your teammate. Yeah. Him and Grosjean have taken that the wrong way and think you need to hit your teammate to do well. And that's an issue. No. But some of the driving from Kevin Magnussen has been very good and it, he's doing it in very poor machinery so I think 6 is a fair rating to give him can't go in much higher could argue lower but that's where we're at Roman Grosjean I mean he's Finished only half of the races and got points finished in three of those. We did talk in the mid-season review. If you haven't checked that out, check that out uh, below, guys, in the videos. Um, this could be the spell the end for Roman Grosjean. It is a season to forget and some of it not his fault, some of it his fault. And yeah, he is... He comes with that card of he tries a bit too hard and things don't work out. He's the you squeeze too hard and it slips through your fingers type of thing. Well, I gave him a four. Same sort of thinking. You reverse roles here. Yeah. You're the nicer one. I'm the... Oh, no, I've, always, I I've always been the nicer one with these ratings. Oh, no, actually, not with these ratings. I haven't. Yeah, exactly. See? Yeah. Well, I'm trying to pick yourself up. Let's be honest with it. He's only finished half the races, so the maximum you can give him is a five. From the six races he has finished, three of them were points finishes, which, well, relatively good return. When you're in a team like Haas, you need to be finishing as many races as possible, and he's not. You can't argue that someone's having a good season when... They've only finished half the races that they've entered. No. Uh, once again, into team battles, collisions with his teammate, being on the radio and complaining about his teammate when 
in all honesty, there's been times where he's been moaning about Kevin Magnussen's driving, and it's been fair. I, you know, it's it is one of those frustrations that get into him, and he's been driving Australia's spec car for the last three races now, and yeah, it's not a great season. No. Potentially he's lost because I don't see Haas keeping him on and I think he's probably one of those drivers where because of not finishing races and his age it's a bit of a risk to take him on so yeah. I, he would only be going to one of those teams in the bottom end of the grid and I think they would be more willing to potentially go with a rookie and see the long-term benefits rather than short-term benefits of going with an experienced driver. As previously discussed in driver predictions videos, a little plug in there. Watch it, please. And the final team on the grid. So, you know, we can relax, guys. Williams. We're we'll getting more positive here. I don't know. Any bashing going to happen? It's probably not sad despair more than anything. Yeah. Alright then, well we'll start with you as we have done with all of these ratings. Seven. I think... I mean you might... Uh, seven? They've been consistently at the back all the time. Uh, yes, they've gone backwards from their last three races, they've gone up. I think they were... how the season started was terrible in terms of missing days of testing. And um, yeah, it, it could easily be like a five or a four, if you say in terms of that. But I, I just feel from where, if you viewed them at the back in terms of where they're progressing and going forward, I think they're getting solid and better performances and they have finished every race. They are improving. They were always naturally going to be back. They're one of the poorer teams on the grid now because they still stand as an independent and they're not a car manufacturer, so they can't bringing there. Um, it is just great to still have them in and competing in F1. Yeah, and I'd agree, I've given them a seven, only team to finish every race. But it's got worth something. Only, only team to have both drivers finish every race, because there are drivers that have finished every race so far. Yes. But every race they've had a finish shows the reliability of the car. Didn't start off great, but looking at it, from my perspective, there's a definite upward curve with regards to the Williams, the other teams, they've dropped off, Williams are improving. I predicted it for, which race was it? I predicted that they wouldn't qualify in 19th and 20th. Yeah, that was um, in Germany when Sebastian Vettel wasn't able to put in a qualifying lap. But then we go to Hungary. We don't get the technicalities. Yeah, we don't. I made a prediction. It was right. Jewel, we then had Hungary, George Russell, 16th. Should have got into Q2. Outperform Joe Venazzi and Lance Straub. So the car is on an up. When you look at where they were at the start of the season to where they are now, big improvements have been made. So... They're now within touching distance of the pack, whereas at the start of the season they were two. They, they were of in one one. Formula 1.75. They were in a class of their own because they were at 1.23 seconds off of the pack. Yeah. Robert Kubica was a further second and a half behind George Russell in Australia, and it, the car just wasn't great. You Improvements have been made. I see the opportunity for them to build in the second half of the season and I'm hoping for a few more points for them. I'd like George Russell to get some, you know, being the only driver that hasn't got any points. But an okay season because of the improvements. Yeah. Interesting in the second I half think of the season. I think that's where everything's coming from with regards to this rating. Yeah. It's much... It, the rating of the team you is probably a lot of lower, it's but separate. If yeah. we were viewing it compared to everyone else, then you're probably looking at a four, three type of thing. I think you compare to where Williams were and where they are in this season. So yeah, they're almost in a class of their own. But uh, probably moving on now, Ash. Yep, yeah. and we'll start off with this guy, Robert Kubica. 
And your rating for him? It's a three. Oh, um, four points finish. Yeah, you see, look, this is where everyone starts going, I can't live with you. You're, you've been ultra positive one minute and then you, there's no middle ground with you. It's just either desperate positivity or hopeless despair. I, I desperately want Robert to do well. He was such a talent when he got injured. I, who knows, he might have been world champion material. He was certainly a very good driver within that team. I think Lewis Hamilton has come out at some point and said he was one of the best drivers uh, that he's ever competed against on the grid. But he is, he is finished um, 10 to two behind his teammate in races lost all 12 in qualifying to his teammate they have the same car and they have obviously mixed it he does have the physical uh, disadvantage of his amputated arm but i believe everything has been put forward to him that it is as even a playing field as possible and they've even gone beyond that when updates come out he generally gets the first kind of dibs on those updates um yeah 20th for every race, pretty much, other than when there's been DNFs. And um, I've gone for a five. Gonna be a bit, be honest with it. He's done okay. Picked up places where he can. Got the points finish in um, Germany, but out qualified in every single race. Only finished ahead of George Russell twice, one being Germany, the other was in France, and I believe George Russell was suffering with tyre wear issue, wasn't he? He had some sort he of had, issue. Yeah, yeah he had, George Russell had to make a sec another pit stop, which obviously put him, behind. put him behind. So, really, that race would have been below George mm -hmm. on that one. Um, but he has finished every single race. It's, it was an incredible achievement to get back into Formula 1 considering have we got the performances we were expecting or wanting? No. But he's doing what he can because even with the improvements that Williams is still the worst car on the grid. Not as big a gap now, but it is still relatively poor, and yeah, it, there's not much you can say for Robert Kubica's performances. This is what it is. Yeah, but he's got points finish. Well done, Robert. Same argument that people are using for Lance Stroll. <laughs> he finished fourth. Yeah. Well. Move on to George Russell before we GR, start. GR, George fashion. Russell. <laughs> One of our favourite rookies on the grid. How's he done? Eight. Uh, you've given Robert a three and you've given George an eight and George Russell hasn't even got a championship point in the team. Right, bear with me on this one. Okay, so, George Russell. Rookie season. Current reigning F2 champion, I think he has done superb in his rookie season to out-qualify his more experienced teammate, uh, 12 to nil, and be winning 10 to two in races, and being uh, second ahead of his teammate at times in race finishes. I think he was a second ahead in uh, Hungary as well. He was certainly a lap ahead um, because Kubica was the only car to be lapped um, three, three times, times yeah. in that race. GR would have got points this season if Williams had listened to him. He did on the team radio say um, he should have come in for slicks when Lance Stroll did. And we all saw how that worked out for Lance. So you have to assume that it would have worked out similar for the young Williams driver and certainly would have finished ahead of Robert in that regards. Um, so... I think he's had a superb rookie season considering his tools. Like we said in our mid-season review, not necessarily skills he's learning competing wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, although last race, uh, last race was good for that. 
um, it's more the kind of technical and bringing a team forward and making real input into improving as a team that he's getting invaluable experience in this season. Yeah, and I've given him a seven. I have also given him bonus points for his overall performance and manner within the team itself. Wince Williams knowing the car was not going to be the best, but every interview he has had, he has come away knowing that he has learnt something from a race weekend, be it tyre management, be it race craft. He is always showing that he's willing to learn and he's also developing his skills. Mm. Best qualifying position of 16th for a Williams that has consistently qualified 19th and 20th. On the whole, I think average gap between him and Kubica in qualifying is around the second mark. So when you say he's out qualifying his teammate, he's doing it by a large amount. It's not a few tenths here or there. It's, rel it's relatively big gaps. Should have got out of Q1 in Hungary. Was unfortunate not to. Yeah, just probably like... A few seconds later, that track evolution yeah. might have been able to get enough to get him through. Exactly, but he has had a very good season. Made up places in pretty much every race. I think there's only been one or two races where he hasn't made up places. Admittedly, some of those have been because of DNFs, but doing really well this season. I would put him as being probably the second best performing rookie this season. I'd agree with that. So, you have to try and take into it. It's hard to compare. In Formula 1, it is hard to compare drivers from in different cars. Yeah. And, but you do have it to try and... such a big difference. Yeah. And you do have to try and take that into account. He is performing extremely well in a car that isn't competing with anything else mm. and that's the reason why we've been harsh on the likes of Stroll and Grosjean so good season so far from George Russell done very well yeah and that guys rounds that off no I'm going to throw a curveball in there it's always you that does it so it's my turn this time alright sorry I have no idea what this is so far away Rating of 1 to 10 for the season so far. Oh. Love it. I've got to shock it. 7. 7 out of 10 because the last four races have been really good, exceptional one race talent emerging there. Although it is exceptional what Mercedes did dominance wise in the first part of the season in terms of a fan and a spectator when as a competitive sport it isn't great to see and it isn't great to watch so therefore it's a seven i'm going to go for an eight mainly because there is so much to this season i'm just a bad guy in this video uh, it's more the fact that there's been a lot of layers to this season yeah. that we haven't had for a while so we have had the exceptional races in the last four at the top of the grid but throughout the season there have been battles in the midfield and towards the back of the grid. I think the rookies that have come in have all shown that they are more than capable of racing. The fact that the less experienced drivers are outperforming experience in terms of definitely when you look at some of the rookie performances. Mm. But then you look at the likes of Charles Leclerc taking that step up into Ferrari and outperforming. You have got the likes of Carlos Sainz who is a less experienced driver within the grid performing really well. I just think as a whole the layers to this season are adding to the excitement that we haven't had for a while in F1. Yeah, certainly are. Yeah, and no, 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 no more curveballs. No, no, no. Guys, that is it. That is the end of our mini-series of the mid-season uh, ratings for the teams. Hope you've enjoyed it, guys. Um, if you haven't checked out the previous two parts of these series, give it a watch um, because it'll make everything else seem clear. And as always, guys, um, if you like what we do, give us a thumbs up. Let us know what we do.
Yeah. And make sure to press the subscribe button so that you're able to get the videos into your inbox. Making sure to press the bell notification button just so that you know as soon as they're live. Then you can be the first one to watch them, get to see what we're doing, and you're going to know about it. All our F1 content. Exactly. Just a, a click. Um, guys, comment below. Let us know if you agree with our ratings. Uh, were we too harsh on the likes of Kibitza and Lance Stroll? towards me, probably. Uh, uh, or do you completely agree? Do you, uh, what would your driver rating, what would your driver ratings be? What would your team ratings be? Get involved, guys. We, we can't wait to kind of chat to you guys in the comments below. Definitely. But as always, guys, only one way to round off a video. UF1 fans, keep racing. Hi, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video today. Obviously that was the conclusion of our second mini-series of the summer. Uh, we've had a lot of fun filming it. Um, hope you guys have enjoyed it. Guys, if you are new here, don't forget, subscribe to the channel down below here. And maybe check out part one of this mid-season rating series up there. And then down here, we also have the mid-season ratings part two, just to complete the set for you guys. See ya!